Hey, how's it going guys? I, uh, I wanted to do a video about a tool that just came out from DeWalt, this barrel grip jigsaw with a Collins coping foot. But then I thought, you know, it, it'd actually be a little bit more interesting to have a little bit more of a debate about what tool is the best uh, fundamental tool for coping trim moldings. So that's, that's actually what this uh, video is going to be more about. I'm going to go through a little bit of the journey that I went through in trying to figure out what system was going to work the best for me. Um, I think that it's important to be able to use all of the different tools, uh, whether it's a hand coping saw, an angle grinder, a regular jigsaw, or a jigsaw with a coping foot, but eventually you're going to come up with a uh, standardized tool that you're going to use, your company is going to use, and I'm going to debate a little bit on why for me it's a barrel grip jigsaw with the Collins coping foot. So kind of go through a little bit of what I've got here. So I know it'll sound crazy to most carpenters, but I actually never got proficient with a hand coping saw. Um, I'm more self-taught, even though I've been doing this for 15 years. Um, I probably didn't buy my first hand coping saw until a few years ago and I only did because I felt like I should, like I had some kind of guilt for not owning one. Um, but I've always coped with either a jigsaw or a grinder. Um, and I, I started out with, uh, this is a Festool Raz and it, it worked pretty well for me uh, kind of getting started. In carpentry, I wasn't doing a lot of big moldings, so uh, you know it, it's it's pretty accurate once you get good with it, uh, following the contour of a molding. But the biggest disadvantage with a hand coping saw and an angle grinder is I feel like they really fall short once you get into higher end jobs with bigger moldings. Um, the first time you get into a a really large crown or a hardwood crown, a hand coping saw is just a tremendous amount of work to really produce a lot of copes. And that is where I feel like a jigsaw really shines. So this is a Festool, I think it's, it's a 300 EQ, and this is the jigsaw that I've used to cope for a really long time. It's very smooth and I really like it. But by the end of the day, whenever you're coping, I shouldn't even say by the end of the day, within a couple hours of coping, you've turned this thing around so many times that the cord would just end up being a disaster. So while it was nice, um, whenever, whenever DeWalt came out with this, I was absolutely thrilled. So that's a little bit of what this video is going to be about, is this tool. I'm going to run through some copes with this. Um, you can buy this, you know, it's been available for about a month or two. I had pre-ordered it quite a few months ago. Um, I put a coping foot on it and I've run a pretty decent amount of trim with it. So I'm confident in giving it a, a good review at this point. So first baseboard coping. Uh, something a lot of guys uh, who are kind of making their way in self-top might not know is that if you walk into most production trim jobs and look at uh, especially the old school carpenters there, they're going to be cutting their base on the saw vertically upside down. And you might wonder, well, why in the world are they cutting base upside down? The reason for that is after you put your 45 on to cope it, uh, if you're using a handsaw, it would be a lot of work to cope that straight edge with a handsaw. And why would you do that whenever you can just use a right, your, your miter saw? So the standard process would be to cut your 45 and then swing it over back to zero and then cut your straight line and then cope the rest by hand. So that's typically why you see baseboard cut upside down. I cut baseboard upside down. Um, with a sliding miter saw, you could cut it flat, cut your 45 vertically and then lay it flat and then go into it to make that straight cut. But if you, if you have a fixed saw, that's not gonna work. 
So I did used to use a, a 12 inch fixed saw quite a bit more than I do now. So it's kind of a habit uh, that I do cut my base upside down. It's not something you have to do, but um, for me, it's just kind of how I think it should be done. So that's how I do it. So typical production cutting a piece of baseboard would look like a square cut on this side. I would measure, make my mark on my coat side, bump the saw over to 45. Now I'd bring it back to zero. And I like to make a square cut down here just so the top of the cope has a nice square cut. I find it's a little bit easier than trying to do that with the jigsaw. Now I grab my cooking saw. So, oops. So with these two files, a lot of a lot of base profiles and even crown profiles have a bead, uh, and you really can't hardly do that arch with uh, a jigsaw blade. So I tend to just hog that out and then sometimes it can be nice just to hit that with a file just to smooth it off. But usually with good jigsaw control, you don't have to. The other file that I use a ton for baseboard and crown is this half moon file. And that'll get in uh, also to just kind of smooth over any rough edges, but again, Whenever I'm running base, I any anymore I don't even hardly use these, but they're they're good to have around. So now I'm going to walk you through the process on coping crown. It's quite a bit. Um, the the advantage of the coping foot on the jigsaw really shines on crown even more so than base. Um, I get it. There's a lot of guys who have done the hand coping saw forever, and that's just how they do it. But I feel like on crown molding, you just cannot beat uh, a coping foot on a jigsaw. So just setting up my fence. I ran quite a few hundred feet of this crown already on this job. So I know where everything needs to be. Then this is my coping jig, which will hold the crown in position as I'm coping it. I'll put that about right there. So with crown, uh, Again, the first thing we're gonna do is make a square cut down here. Well, I'm right-handed, so I always wanna cope right. So my 45 is gonna be on this side. I like to square off the very bottom of the cut with the miter saw because I feel like it's more square and accurate than the jigsaw. So now that's squared off. We'll come down here to my coping jig. Now a lot of guys, whenever they're coping crown with a handsaw, they're laying it flat and they're using the coping saw and they're back cutting it like crazy. And the disadvantage to that is you're never quite sure if you back cut enough, so you end up taking off way more than you need to. Uh, and then what happens is whenever you're trying to pop pieces in place, that sharp edge that's created where it's back cut a ton is going to want to break and splinter as pieces get slid into place. With the coping foot on the jigsaw, 
all you have to do is make sure that your blade is slightly out of plumb that way you're not back cutting it a ton and with the piece in position like this it's super easy to see um, because that's how it's basically going to sit on the wall so I'll run through a, uh, a couple copes on crown with the jigsaw and show you what that looks like. The key here is you want to make keep constant contact with the base on the back of the trim with good pressure. Whenever you start to not have good pressure, that's whenever the blade can grab a hold and start bouncing around. But as long as you keep good pressure up here, it'll be very smooth. Also learning to rock the jigsaw back and forth will help you get really accurate with uh, getting real nice and tight up to that line. I had to move my camera a bit, but the way you would test, I mean, I don't ever test these, but this is the concept. Um, that's how the crown would then fit. And that is the reason that whenever you look at your blade right here, as long as it's slightly out of plumb, uh, going in this way and on this plane also, you know that whenever you go and uh, put your piece on the wall, you're not going to have any pieces of meat that are going to want to push it out and keep it from going together tight. It's going to fit nice and tight. So I hope that there's been some things in this video you found helpful and interesting. Um, this is the system I use for coping crown. It, it works great for me and gives me great results. Um, you know, I think the coping foot is an absolute no-brainer for coping. I think it saves fatigue on the arm, which will compound over time, wearing out, you know, your joints. Um, and, and it's fast and it's accurate. And uh, it's, it's fairly easy to learn. It doesn't take too long. Um, obviously, I'm not saying that it needs to replace hand coping skills, but I think over the long haul, uh, as a standardized process for me and my company, reaching for a coping foot barrel grip jigsaw makes a lot more sense than a handsaw. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I know it's uh, kind of a heated topic. We've all got our way of doing things, which is fine, not a big deal. Um, the, we all get better through the conversation. So let me know your thoughts. I'll have links to this jigsaw, the coping foot, the other tools that I showed earlier in the notes below. Check those out. If you found the review helpful uh, and you want to buy it, be sure to click through those links and uh, appreciate the views for watching and uh, let me know if any other video topics that you want to see or comments or whatever things I can change to try and make the video better. Um, definitely want to do that. So. Thanks for watching again. Have a good day.